Electric driving in the Netherlands only really started around three years ago, but the history of the electric car goes back further than you might think. As early as the 19th century, there are electric cars that produce less vibration, fumes, and noise than petrol cars. This makes them popular. Inventors like Ferdinand Porsche are enthusiastic as well. His 1897 system Loner Porsche runs on two electric motors. And after inventing the light bulb, Thomas Edison works on batteries for electric vehicles. But due to their range, or rather their limited range, electric cars eventually drop out of the picture. But with each energy crisis throughout history, they reappear. In the 70s, idealists convert existing cars to electric, although the industry doesn't follow their example yet. In the 90s, that changes for the first time in California. General Motors introduces the EV1 after the government has issued stringent standards for harmful emissions. In the slipstream, various electric cars are whizzing around, but from one day to the next, the cars are banned by the manufacturers to the displeasure of motorists who have now acquired a taste for electric driving. Apart from a handful of Hollywood stars, the world is not yet ready for the electric car. Until eventually things really get going in the 21st century. Several manufacturers bring electric models onto the market and people are buying them all over the world. Various models can be seen driving around the Dutch roads in 2011, like the Tesla Roadster and the Nissan Leaf, the car of the year. The plug-in hybrids that drive fully electric for a few dozen miles before switching to fuel are also a big success. The high-end Fisker Karma is selling exceptionally well, and the Opel Impera was named European Car of the Year in 2012. Soon, nearly all the big manufacturers are releasing electric models. But what good are electric cars without charging facilities? To enable on-street charging, the ELAD Foundation was set up, and on October 14, 2009, the first public charging point was opened by former Dutch Prime Minister Ruud Lubbers. After a cautious start, more charging points soon followed, and more and more councils wanted to join in. Not only is the infrastructure slowly coming of age, but so is the available support. Agreements are made on a universal plug, with a special pass you can charge and pay anywhere. Charging abroad is made possible through international cooperation. On their smartphone or sat-nav, motorists can get real-time information on where to find available charging stations. The number of proud and enthusiastic electric car drivers is growing, and numerous records are broken like the one for the largest number of charging points and cars recharging in one location. In the past three years, the ELAD Foundation has worked hard to make electric driving in the Netherlands possible. We've installed thousands of charging points in streets all over the country. But we've passed the startup phase. We need to find structural funding so the rollout of public charging points can continue. The ELAD Foundation is not doing this on its own. The new Dutch administration has recognized that electric transport has a lot to offer the Netherlands. It plans to make agreements on the charging infrastructure with grid operators, energy companies, and local authorities in order to stimulate electric mobility further. This is stated in the coalition agreement. In short, electric driving may have a long history, but its future has only just begun.